last time on Tiger Road, our heroes had gotten the villain Xanthia right where they wanted him. But for some reason, Toru saved him by knocking him out of the way of Goku's Super Dragon Fist. Has the Ethereal Guardian turned rogue? Or does he know something very important that we do not? This is part four of an ongoing series. Check out the first three videos in the playlist in the description. As Toru knocks Xanthia out of the way of Goku's attack. Just what is that idiot doing? With everyone catching their breath, what could be the motive here? Why would Toru want to save Xanthia in this moment when the goal all along has been to stop him? It is possible, like in the original Broly movie. In this state, Xanthia's power is overflowing and it could be detrimental to the planet if you were to be destroyed in this manner. But for now, we don't know. After taking more punishment for his brother's doppelganger, Zen teleports over to Yoki pleading. I'm sorry to ask, but please keep him safe. Without much recourse, she promises to do so. Just as Zen goes sprinting back into battle, again Toru begs him to wait. But what's gotten into our mysterious warrior? While the struggle he has accepting his brother's death is one thing, why save Xanthia when the villain's immediate response was to attack him? What could the connection be? Grabbing Xanthia from behind, the beast thrashes back and forth. Oh, what are you doing? Let's go of me! From the air, he beckons over to Goku. Unable to articulate perfectly, he does well enough to get his point across by struggling out. That dragon fist technique of yours! Causing Xanthia to panic. No, no, you fool! That will kill you too! And judging by the look on his face, this kind of must have been how Piccolo felt. Zen continues that this guy will only hurt more people if left alive. Do it! Hurry! I can't hold him much longer! Clearly apprehensive, our hero doesn't quite know how to react to this. Sure, he's got a shot, but we all know Goku's reluctance to kill innocent people. What are you waiting for? Without much choice, they might not get another shot at this. No way! Falling to the ground, the fight is over. Crucia is able to make her way to Zen first. But Toro takes to his unhealthy attachment to him, begging to know if he's still here. Although unless he plans on baby birding him like Trunks did to Mai, Goku offers to let him give his friend a senzu bean. It'll heal him. Toru finally iterates that they don't understand. Zen cannot live without Xanthia. If one dies, they both die. Zen knew this. He must have figured that this was the best way to sever this fiend at the root. Just like Piccolo or Kami or Beerus and Shin, this isn't an unfamiliar concept to our heroes. Taking action, Grand Destroyer Goro commends his assistant to send Xanthia to Ashura's room and do it immediately. This is the realm he escaped from in the first place. Surprisingly, either as a means to get on the good side of Goro or genuinely concerned, Beerus queries Whis if there's a feasible way to help this guy. He responds that it's hard to say. The tether they share means to help the good is to also help the bad. He isn't sure of the best solution here. When out of nowhere, Toru announces that he's going to take him to Yardrat right away. But Yardrat? What could that possibly have to do with this? 
warrior elaborates that the Tauren and Yardridium people have worked together for eons. If he goes, maybe they can tell him something more about the four mysterious treasures. Bringing Goku to mention that, just so he knows, the Yardrats are actually the reason he can move instantaneously. While Toru seems to more or less blow off this remark, Vegeta finds himself fixed on the idea of the four mysterious treasures. Leading to some exposition, the four mysterious treasures are the four divine beasts. Blue Dragon, White Tiger, Red Bird, and Black Tortoise. Legend has it that when they come together, a goddess named Renoa will grant your wishes. Goro admits that not even he's heard such a tale. Which is by design. She is a god of Torah, and her legend has been sealed away as nothing more than a myth. And, with this echoing a story we've kind of heard before, Goku can't help but feel that this sounds almost exactly like the Dragon Balls. They can gather those up in a day. Sure would be a lot easier. Although the Torin thanks him for his offer, he relents that Shenron is a dragon god. The four mysterious treasures are of the tiger god. He does not think that his kind, the Torins, can ask him of any wish for this reason. Rolling his eyes, Vegeta has to admit that that's a rather heavy assumption. However, the Guardian assures it's not an assumption. Besides, they've already gained the Tiger's Eye from the White Tiger's treasure. The rest of the artifacts must belong to their respective power holders. As far as he knows, Genbu is a race that uses the Turtle Secret Technique. And if he understands correctly, then they're left with the Suzaku, a vile people who represent the Red Bird. Then the Seru of the Blue Dragon. Both formidable warrior races. What warrior races, you say? The prince's ears perk as he questions if he's telling him that there are others besides the Torrens and Saiyans. Perhaps he spoke too soon about that assumption remark after all. Toru bites. Yes, some of them are outright evil. I don't expect most of them to stand aside without a fight. Full of excitement now, Goku declares he's going too. Vegeta's on board as well as he wants to hear more of these fighting races. But with a stern, no, their offer is declined. I'm not interested in the help or attention of the Saiyans. Especially if you are only interested because it seems fun. This is not a game. When Whis takes the opportunity to butt in, friendly reminder, gentlemen, Mr. Toru has every right to tend to his own business as do you. Beerus agrees. That's right. I'm sorry, but... Oh, getting cut off by Whis. Oh my, the great Lord Beerus apologizing? What a marvelous event to be in attendance for. Hey, what? I wasn't apologizing, Whis. Don't interrupt me when I am speaking. Composing himself. What I was actually saying, or asking, why the disdain for the Saiyan race? Doesn't this Zen kid also have Saiyan blood? Unfortunately, Goro is not in the mood for questions. We can discuss this some other time. For now, Toru, take Zen to Yardrat and do so immediately. Taking Zen in his arms, the Torin is eager to comply with the god's request. Facing Yoki, he recommends that she get back home and explain everything. Their people are obviously still in the dark about all that's been happening. With her compliance as well. The Grand Destroyer instructs Karushia to take her back to her world at once. And servicing her way over. Everyone begins to go their own way. Glancing over to his colleague, the Universe 7 God of Destruction inquires of his senior what he plans to do. And for now, he's going back to the temple. He has to send Xanthia back to Ashura's room. Which sounds like a good idea to him. He ushers Whis off as he's grown tired, as the angel goes along with his command. And Karushia offers her own goodbyes. We're then left with only our Universe 7 characters on Earth. Here it starts. Goku, despite that man's will, I want you and your friends to go to Yardrat too. Giving Whis yet another opportunity to joke. Lord Beerus, I don't know how Lord Goro is going to feel about this. Causing Beerus to explain, that's what he is trying to apologize for earlier when he so rudely interrupted. Moving the conversation. The Destroyer comments how that youngster is not in any condition to fight. That means Toru will have to defend him as well as himself when the time comes. But let's not shy away from reality. You two are going to go anyway, right? Here is your out, Saiyans. Don't disappoint me. Sure enough, Goku giggles that he sure got them figured out. 
at Capsule Corp. Goku informs Gohan and Trunks of the situation. It stated everything we know, plus Beerus' request of them going to Yardrat. Something Trunks begs to be a part of. Although Gohan thinks he really ought to stay here. If something happened, the Earth would need him. But he argues there are plenty of others who can do that. He wants to check out these new guys in outer space and stuff. Interjecting, his father tells him it's fine. He can come along. <laughs> Leaving the kid beaming. On Yardrat. Toru arrives to utter devastation. What happened here? Searching for life wherever he can. He thinks he's found him. Getting a look at one of his Yardradian comrades. He inquires what happened here. Recognizing him. The native details. As you can see by the waves of destruction. We were attacked not long ago. Most of us were killed. Not everyone here is a warrior. Even I barely managed to escape. Our planet is finished. But who did this? Where are they? Surely there are draft states that he doesn't plan on going alone. This is very risky. They are vast in number. Even the elders tried to protect us, but they were no match either. One of them ordered us to call the one named Son Goku. But we weren't sure of who he even was or how to find him. Son Goku? Could it really have been that Saiyan? Wonders the Tauren. This takes us back to Goku's offhand comment about learning the instant transmission from these people. The wounded Yardra supposes that he's just going to start looking for him. It's really all he can think to try at this point. Gazing downward to his new friend on the ground, he explains that Zen here has been bound by a wicked evil. He was really hoping to use the mysterious treasures to free him from this bind. To do this, to protect him and whatever remains of Yardrat, he will do what it takes. His comrade only reluctantly warns him to be careful. Thus a new battle begins to freeze Zen from the evil that entraps him. What will happen to our newest hero?